I'm Jen from Jen There Done That, and I live in the beautiful community of Thomas Del Mar, Umacao, Puerto Rico. For the last five years I've lived here, and it's time for a change. So, I'm moving. I'm moving to the west coast of Puerto Rico. So join me for this adventure as we drive about 100 miles across from the east coast to the west coast, relocating from beautiful Umacao, Puerto Rico, to gorgeous Cabo Rojo, Puerto Rico. Along the way, I'm going to share my tips and tricks for moving either from one side of the island to the other or from another location to Puerto Rico. So I have a few moves now. This will be my fifth location in five years in Puerto Rico. I hope to stay a little bit longer in this new spot, but I do have a lot of really good tips and tricks for moving to Puerto Rico and moving within the island that I'm going to share with you today. Moving day, they are all packed up, loaded, ready to go. Wow, this is a lot of work. <laughs> all packed up and ready for transport. All right. Take the exit on the right. Moving in the rain. Oh, so fun. <laughs> All unloaded. Uh, we have a different truck than what was loaded yesterday. They swapped everything out of the smaller truck into a larger truck. I'm not sure why, but it's all here. It's all unloaded and whew, I have way too much stuff. This was exhausting. <laughs> and let's talk about all of the lessons I've learned and what I would definitely do differently moving across the island in Puerto Rico. I'm finally moved, cat and all. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm going to share with you all of the tips and lessons learned and tricks that I've learned from this move and, well, all the others as well. First thing, contact the moving companies as soon as possible. Um, give them a lot of lead time as soon as you know exactly or even at a, a best approximation of how much you're actually going to be moving all of the companies I contacted and the quotes that I was trying to get were based on how much I was actually shipping. It wasn't just a matter of, hey, do you guys ship from wherever to Puerto Rico or from this side of the island to the other? It is, what are you shipping? How much do you have? When are you trying to do it? And that type of thing. So I had to wait until I knew exactly how much I was shipping. I tried to purge and downsize before this latest move, but I have a lot of stuff, uh, mostly electronics. So that was one of the big things to keep in mind is um, my moving needed to be in an enclosed truck. Uh, the last time I moved, I was just moving within Palmas del Mar to Palmas del Mar. I moved one mile. And frankly, I just hired a few guys with a pickup truck and uh, they made quite a few trips, but that pickup truck, and I think there was a flatbed for one of the couches or something, it worked out beautifully. And since they were only going one mile, it was very easy. I packed up everything myself. I didn't really have to hire anybody for it. But this move was over a hundred miles from Omacao to Cabo Rojo. East Coast, or yeah, east coast to west coast. I'm not even sure what coast I'm on right now. Uh, so east coast to west coast. And it rained while we were unloading, if you just saw that. And I knew that it would be raining on the drive. I it just, it's Puerto Rico. It rains. So expect the rain and plan for it, but know what you have and whether or not you need the big, large truck. If you're moving from the States to Puerto Rico, you absolutely have 
uh, it's going to be enclosed. Uh, whether you're shipping yourself um, a full container or uh, boxed items, you it's going to get wet. So make sure that it's it's going to be taken care of. Um, the other thing that I learned the hard way is yes. I moved in December, which is the worst time to move. Uh, between November, December, and January, we have a lot of holidays. Many people are moving into the moving to the island, and it was absolutely just the worst timing. A lot of the companies I tried to get hold of, I couldn't even respond, or they definitely couldn't. They were trying to work with my dates and what I had. Um, December's absolutely the worst, but November, December, January are really tough for shipping. Um, some of the U.S. to Puerto Rico shippers are uh, Crawley, Mayflower, Unlimited Services, uh, La Rosa del Monte. A lot of people I know use them, very happy with them. Um, and UPAC. UPAC is probably the cheapest option and um, they literally you pack it all yourself and it's a container that arrives in San Juan. Um, friends of mine use this and all of their stuff made it to San Juan and then they had to arrange for separate shipping from San Juan to Palmas del Mar in Macau. So definitely make sure that they can do door to door if that's important to you or if you're trying to be um, on a smaller budget, you pack may be a great option for you. None of them were good options for me on this move because they do uh, basically what they consider international, but U.S. to Puerto Rico. I'm moving from Puerto Rico to Puerto Rico. So my best options really were uh, Soul Moving Group and Prico. And um, I ended up going with Prico. They did a really good job, except if you just, as you just saw, they unloaded everything in the truck uh, that they sent on the first day. It was driven back to Carolina in a secure, locked facility. So I asked about that. I made sure that they would take care of my stuff. Uh, then I found out when they arrived, in the morning they had unloaded everything from the smaller truck that was packed perfectly. Uh, they unloaded everything and reloaded it into a larger truck. And we were actually the fourth stop when they finally delivered it. Um, I definitely would have paid a little bit extra to not be the fourth stop and have all of my things unpacked and repacked before they were unloaded. So I will definitely lesson learn, ask, make sure that what you're packing, whether you're packing it on a pallet or you're packing it in a container or however it's being packed, that uh, you have some guarantee or reassurances that that isn't being disturbed. Uh, a girlfriend of mine did the pallet packing. Um, I'll have to ask her if it was, I believe it was Crawley, and uh, they wrapped it up and she knew exactly that's how it was gonna be delivered to her. And so that was kind of my expectation as well for moving across the island. When we loaded the truck, that was gonna be the same truck that was delivered. It wasn't. so. Definitely ask if you're doing um, island shipping. The other option is when we first moved here, I didn't actually use any of these shipping companies. So all of them, I've asked my friends that have moved in the last year or two who they've used. So I can definitely make those recommendations based on my friend's experience. But when we first moved here five years ago, I started contacting some of the shipping companies and asking about prices and uh, all of the information and I just realized that frankly it wasn't worth it for me. There were a few things that I, I packed up and I brought on board the plane, all of my electronics, pets, uh, those things actually came with me and I made a couple trips to make that happen. And then some of my artwork and larger items, I shipped USPS. Uh, we are a US territory. The United States Postal Service delivers here and they do a great job not during the holidays, try to avoid the holidays, <laughs> but they shipped everything to us and I was able to get very reasonable rates and 
it took a little longer, but I got exactly what I wanted, my stuff delivered without any damage for a reasonable cost. So that is one option you may want to consider. Just sell everything or the majority and, and buy new when you get here. Um, we recently just bought a new bed and mattress frame from Costco. They deliver on the island. They're a great option for beds and large furniture and uh, you know everything you would normally buy at Costco. We have Costco and Sam's Club here in Puerto Rico. Um, also, I'm a big Amazon Prime shopper. I know um, they don't always ship everything here. FedEx and UPS sometimes consider Puerto Rico a foreign country. <laughs> so uh, if you find that they're not shipping to you, sometimes I just go and I check eBay for new items and especially for electronic cables, replacement items like that. eBay is excellent. So I've gotten I've had a lot of things sent to me uh, that I purchased on eBay that will send to me here in Puerto Rico. So that's also a great option if you're buying new or replacement. Um, fair warning, because of the salt water we have here and just the humidity, electronics have a very short shelf life. So um, electronics and like my laptop, I had I had a laptop that was a year and a half old and it just died. Um, and that was a laptop I was expecting to at least make it to three, maybe even four years as a backup laptop. No, it was completely dead from the humidity and salt water. So I take better care of my electronics now uh, in my office, but I have a lot of electronics and they do fail uh, more frequently here just because of the humidity and, and salt water, depending on how close you are to the water. Um, the other thing I didn't do is I didn't ship a car here. I looked at whether I wanted to ship a car here or buy a car here. And I ended up buying a car here. I bought a couple cars here now. And um, the excise tax, is anywhere from 20 to 30% on your vehicle. And I looked uh, for my primary vehicle, it was gonna be 25% of the value. And my, my vehicle, uh, my SUV was less than two years old. And the value that they assigned to it was not a Kelly Blue Book value. It was not what I could have gotten for my two-year-old vehicle. It was a substantial amount of money to spend uh, to bring that to the island just for the excise tax, not to mention bringing it all the way from Arizona to the ports in uh, Jacksonville, Florida was one option and then cargo shipping it down. So that was a choice that I made, but there are a lot of people that decide they have vehicles that have sentimental value, they just love them for whatever reason. But the biggest benefit is electricity um, the electric vehicles, uh, electric and um, hybrids. So the excise task is, tax is completely waived for electrics and hybrids. So it's definitely a, a better option for a lot of people. They've decided that uh, they'll ship down their, uh, their vehicle that they don't have to pay the excise tax on. And um, it's a really good option for them. Uh, once you do ship your vehicle down, whether it's electric or not, um, you have to register and plate it uh, with the Puerto Rico Department of Transportation. And DTOP, if you haven't dealt with them yet, they can be a real, it's not easy. So um, you definitely, if you are gonna be shipping a car, make sure that they handle uh, the, the shipping company will help you handle all of the registration, uh, estimating the excise tax if it's applicable, and uh, just helping you through that process. Um, some of the car shipping companies that my friends have used and are very happy with, uh, Unlimited Services, a friend of mine just used this one a month or two ago for their SUV, uh, Puerto Rico Transport, Trailer Bridge, Coastal Auto Shipping, a girlfriend of mine used that for an electric vehicle uh, this summer and had 
great things to say, no problems with them whatsoever. Um, OTH Logistics. One friend of mine has used them successfully three times. He's very happy um, when they needed a new car, they sold the car here on the island and then bought a new electric one and had it shipped down. So they have, he has recommended them to many other people and they're all equally happy. So OTH Logistics, um, they all help with the, the port registration. And La Rosa Del Monte, who also does uh, all of your furniture, antiques, your stuff. Um, Rosa Del Monte and Unlimited Services are two really good ones. If you're shipping all of your items and a car, they can do both. And again, um, everyone I've spoken to that's moved here in the last year or two has had very positive statements about them, about the pricing, the care, and just basically taking care of their customers. So that's really good to hear. Um, basically, it just comes down to deciding if you want to bring your possessions, your things, or if it's just time to get some new stuff. Um, like I said, five years ago, it was definitely time to get some new stuff. Since then, I've acquired a lot of things on the island too many, <laughs> but um, there are some great options for renting furnished places. So if you're, if when you're first moving down here, if you're not sure you even want to ship all of your things here, it's a great option to come down and just rent a furnished place and decide, do I want to go through the hassle of bringing my own stuff in? Do I want to rent a furnished place or am I just going to buy all brand new stuff? It's really up to you, but you have a lot of great choices, whether you're moving from the, the States or other places to Puerto Rico or just across the island. So I hope this was helpful. If you know of any other uh, inner island shipping companies, please leave those in the comments below because I only found two that uh, really did the packing and shipping. So I would love to know if there are other options. And of course, I'll leave all of this information in a link in the description below. So go ahead and check those out. And thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos from Jen There, Done That in Puerto Rico, the Caribbean and beyond.